A full glass cockpit for less than $2,000. Is it too good to be true or is it actually a great option? We are about to stall and this is our adventures in and around South Africa. Hey, I'm Carl and we've recently completed a budget bush plane build. During this build we looked at some affordable EFIS options when Level Aviation reached out to us to test their iLevel 3 AW. We figured that it perfectly fit our goal for the mini-me project of modern and affordable. So when we pitched the idea to them to do a permanent install in this project, they eagerly sent us a unit to test out with only one request, to make an honest review. So. Here it is. First of all, I'll go over the unboxing experience, the features of the unit, the installation process, and then the software setup and calibration before going on a test flight and giving my final thoughts and recommendations. In the description, you'll find the timestamps if you'd like to skip to any particular part of the video. And while you're down there, if you like this video, please consider subscribing for more content like this. The unboxing experience is more like opening an iPad than traditional avionics, a testament to their approach towards modernizing the cockpit. In it you'll find the unit itself along with some documentation, cables including the antennas for GPS and ADS-B and the mounting brackets. The features of the iLevel 3 AW is nothing short of what you'll find in any other EFA solution on the market, in some cases even a bit more. This includes a true artificial horizon that's not GPS based like many other affordable EFA solutions out there. It includes WAS GPS, ADSB traffic and weather in, PETA static ports for true airspeed, vertical speed and altitude readings, Wi-Fi connectivity for your phone or tablet, data recording for post-flight debriefings and one of the features we look forward to the most is its small and light, fitting in perfectly with our goal to keep the Avid as light as possible. Installing the eye level is a pretty simple process. The key is to find a spot where you can mount it level with the horizon when the plane is in level flight. In our case there were no mounting spots that was level with flight attitude. So what I found to work quite well is to measure the angle required to get it flight level and then 3D print a bracket to mount it to. What I would like to recommend to Level Aviation is to include or offer a bracket with the unit that is adjustable to make the installing process a bit easier. Wiring was also really quite simple. When using it with a GRT engine monitor, you only need three wires to get going. On pin 8 of the DB15 plug goes the ground. On pin 15 goes your power from the avionics bus, make sure to use a 1 amp fuse. And on pin 10 goes your serial output wire from the GRT engine monitor for monitoring the engine instruments directly on the eye level EFIS. This was the key part that made the permanent installation possible. After connecting the unit to your aircraft's PTA static system, it is highly recommended that you do a leak test to ensure the accuracy of your airspeed and altimeter. You can use something like a balloon to test it, but in our case, I had it tested during the aircraft's annual inspection. We looked at a few different ways to mount the phone or iPad onto the instrument panel and eventually settled on this design that allows the phone to be easily removed and charged while installed. We tested phones and a friend's iPad mini and in my opinion the iPad mini is definitely the way to go for this particular setup as a permanent install. The reason being is that when using the iPad mini split screen feature with a level aviation app on the one side and your EFB of choice on the other side it's just like using the more expensive Garmin G3X with your flight instruments, engine monitoring and maps all on one screen. Setting up the Level Aviation app is pretty simple. To start off, you can build your own EFA screen with all the information you want displayed with up to four screens at a time. In our case, I've added the EFA screen at the top with the engine monitoring page at the bottom and swiping right, I've added the autopilot page. I'll get to why a bit later. 
Going into the settings, you can then set up your input sources for speed and heading, as well as setting up the units for display, in our case, miles per hour. And lastly, your aircraft specific V speeds. These speeds will then translate to the airspeed strip on the left hand side of the EFA screen, just as it would on any other EFAs. When using the unit with an engine monitor like us, you then need to go into the device config menu to assign the auxiliary input from earlier to the engine monitor you're using, in our case the GRT EIS. After that, you'll need to reboot and then you can start setting up the engine screen by tapping on the gear and then on each of the gauges you want to display. You can enter a name, toggle the gauge visibility, enter the unit is measured in, choose to show warnings and of course enter the operating limits. Level Aviation has once again made the process pretty easy and straightforward. Overall, I found the app to work really well and easy to use. There are a few things I'd like to see added or improved, but I'll get to that a bit later. After setting everything up, it's time to calibrate the compass and the artificial horizon for install errors. Done. We will now start the first flight test. During the flight test, there's two things we need to calibrate. We need to calibrate the compass, and the other thing is the AR. So I need to fly straight and level for the ARs. Uh, let it calibrate and then fly two orbits, about 40 seconds each, for the compass to calibrate and then I can save it. This brings up something I really like about the level aviation units. Almost everything is adjustable or calibratable. This includes your PTA static system, but you do not want to mess with that without consulting level aviation. Now that we have everything set up properly, it's time to go for a test flight to put the eye level through its paces. Made a little flight plan. We're going to take off from here, go to Heidelberg, out to Adab, and then back over here. Obviously, the first thing you also want to do is enter your QNH. So, because we uh, use QNH here in South Africa, uh, standard would be 1013. Uh, our current Q&H is 1021, so you simply tap on it and enter it, and there it is set up, it shows the altitude in, and all my temperatures are in the green. Nice and very clear that the colors make it really easy to see, to see your important temperatures and everything right in front of you. So I'm going to take off, first of all I'm going to take off with a max rate of climb. I'm hoping to see anything from a thousand feet and above. And then I'll settle up into a cruise climb for the rest up to 7,000 feet. That way we can see how, how the EFAS displays the information, how clear it is to see what our climb rate is. Once we're airborne and we're high enough, I'll do a few flight maneuvers like steep turns, stalls, and we'll see how, how accurate it is and how responsive it is to certain maneuvers. Okay. There it is, about a thousand feet a minute at the moment. Let's turn out towards our first heading. Okay, so I'll pull it back to the crew, more of a crew, cruise climb. And so far I'm really liking it. Everything is nice and clear, the text and everything is big enough to easily read and understand. And the uh, artificial horizon seems to be very accurate. And we're coming up to 7,000 feet, I'll level off here. Now that we're here, I'll do a steep turn to the left, and we'll see, and I'll end up again on my heading for the next waypoint. A nice and steep turn, and it actually keeps up really, really well. And we're coming up my waypoint. By heading again, some of the other EFIS solutions in this price bracket actually use a GPS-based AR system, which means it's actually delayed and it's not true ARs or true artificial horizon. It's a GPS-based one. So you do have a delay, which this one does not. And we'll go into a stall. I'll go for a full flap stall, so power off stall. So I'll come off the power. And we're in the in the white arc. I'll pull pull flaps. 
down, 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 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, and there we go, 33, the post dropped. And that is, as far as I'm aware, that is the correct stall speed for this airplane. In my flight testing and everything, that's about what I've found. I really like the iLevel 3 AW. I think it perfectly fits our goal for the project and it's for sure a conversation starter with anyone who peeps into the cockpit. They call it the level effect. It's a unique solution to the avionics question from a very friendly family run company, making the glass cockpit available to more people at an affordable price. There are a few things I would like to see added and one or two bugs that I found. Something I find myself trying to work out very often is true airspeed and density altitude. It should be a fairly easy software update to the app if you have an outside air temperature probe installed. So I'm sure it could be done. I might have missed it if it has, but having audio alerts for certain things like high temperatures, low fuel or low airspeed would also make a great addition. One little bug that I found is that the artificial horizon has gone a bit cockeyed once when trying to calibrate it and had to reset and start again before it came to. But it has since not had any trouble. This last feature request is more of a nice to have, but it would be really cool if they could integrate it with EFB apps like Skydemon or Full Flight in such a way that you could load your waypoints or flight plan onto the Level Aviation app for navigation or to use with the autopilot which they just released. I think this would be a major plus if they can make it work and make it even more worth it as a permanent install. The iLevel 3 AW won't quite compete with the Garmin or Dynan EFA suites, except for the price. But it places itself very competitively in the more affordable EFAS market, and I definitely think it's one to consider. Would I go for it again? Absolutely. I really hope this video helped you make your decision regarding your next EFAS. And if you're interested in buying a Level Aviation product, they've hooked us up with a 5% discount that you can use. The link is in the description and make sure to use the code about to stall at checkout. If you have any feedback on the iLevel 3 or have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll gladly answer them. Like this video if you do, check out our affordable bush plane build over here and until next time, dream big, fly high and live the adventure.